What if you had to take an art class in which you were taught only how to paint a fence, but were never shown the paintings of Van Gogh or Picasso? Alas, this is how math is taught, and so for most of us it becomes the intellectual equivalent of watching paint dry. Edward Frankel from his book Love and Math. In this video, I want to take a look at a couple apps that, for me, change what we can do in mathematics and what we should do in mathematics. Let's start with a simple quadratic. y equals x squared plus 8x plus 15. This sort of equation we graph and factor and solve if we set it equal to 0. Right here I can see the vertex. Here's one of the roots, there's the other root, and just up here is a y-intercept. From the roots, I can construct the factors. I can reverse engineer the factors. Desmos is fundamentally a graphing calculator. From the vertex and the y-intercept, I could also determine the equation of the line itself. I could generate the equation that generates the line. So Desmos is a graphing calculator first and foremost, but it's so much more powerful. It's a mathematical language system. Let's take a look at uh, another example. Here we have a parabola again. There's a root. Uh, the two roots are shown at the bottom, one down there, one on the left. The vertex here at the top, but I also have a red dot that I can move along the parabola. The red dot is the arc of a ball, say, along it. In fact, if I press play, I can actually animate that on Desmos. Now, there's no code driving this. The code is the math. The only code is what you see right here on the screen. That's it. There's no four next loops. There's no... Uh, coding language. It is a language of math that makes this happen on the screen. And so we can see the arc of the ball traveling back and forth from one root to the other root set by the limits on my x1 domain there. A, uh, another thing that you can do with Desmos is you can graph data and regress it. Here we have data from a volume versus mass experiment determining the, determining the density of soap. Mass is approximately equal to the density times the volume. Rather than worrying about how to calculate the slope, learning the point-slope form and solving the point-slope form, uh, Desmos, given two points, three points, however many points you want to give it, will give us the slope. That's the slope, 0.89. And that slope is the density of the soap. That slope has meaning. And so the, we let the technology do what the technology does best uh, and uh, calculate the values. The students are left to do quantitative reasoning about what their results mean. It brings meaning back and uh, eliminates some of the, if you will, the drudgery of the manual calculations using paper and pencil. Uh, Desmos though, is so much more powerful than just that. I'm, there I'm regressing to a line, but Desmos will regress to any function you give it. This is a height versus velocity data set that uh, theoretically is modeled by a square root equation. Here, I'm regressing. That little tilde means that Desmos will regress it. I'm regressing against the expected theoretic model that the velocity is proportional to the height, the square root of the height, to be more precise, and uh, that there'll be a constant k1 in the front. k1 is expected to be 37. It came out to be 33, but theoretically 37, experimentally 33. And we can look to see whether the data does indeed obey that equation. But bear in mind that I'm regressing against the square root. That's not something you can normally do in a statistics package. Desmos will regress against any equation with whatever 
uh, free variables you want to put in it as many as you make you happy. Uh, so you can regress it against any particular system. I can do graphs such as this. The the purple line at the top there um, is, uh, let me put that back, the purple line up at the top, it goes right through those orange dots. The purple line is the equation y equals x squared minus 8x plus 25. It has imaginary roots because it doesn't cross the x-axis. But those imaginary roots are still centered on the vertex line here, x equals 4. And the distance to those imaginary roots, the, the distance from 4 to 7 being 3, it'll be 3i, uh, that distance is actually the distance to the roots on the reflection of the x-axis. And so I can actually make that diagram here a little complex to explain, but the imaginary roots are the reflection of the real roots if you reflected the purple line around the uh, green vertex, horizontal green dash line. If you reflected the purple line, you get the red line, and the roots, the imaginary roots are plus or minus 3i, the real roots are plus or minus 3 there. So you can do some things in Desmos that would be rather difficult to do on, on, on paper and to play with. You can do vectors in Desmos. Here I have a, a blue vector that has a magnitude controlled by this, the angle of the blue vector controlled here, and a purple vector, that's the magnitude of the purple vector, and the angle. And this particular animation is showing me what happens when the purple and the blue vector are added, which results in the red vector there out here. This is all being done by the math down here. It's the math that's driving this whole system. These are the equations. There's a few of them to get it all to happen, but it's just math, nothing more. Math and only math is being used here. Desmos can do so much more. Desmos can make a normal curve graph. Desmos can also produce uh, histograms with box plots, quantitative reasoning, quantitative explorations, exploring data, exploring results. This is quantitative. This is math. This is math, not just linear equations and quadratic equations. Trigonometry becomes accessible. Here I've got a purple line, and I've got a little, uh, in this case, I'm having the little ball run down the purple line. And I can adjust the amplitude and see what changing the amplitude does. A is the amplitude. L is the wavelength. Uh, a little bouncy, but you can see I'm playing with the wavelength and amplitude. So I can adjust the wavelength and am amplitude in real time while the animation is still running with the ball following the uh, line there that you see. And again, the only equations are the ones you see on your screen right now. There, there, there's no other equations here. That's it. Those are the only equations those, uh, that are running this. The amplitude equation, the uh, wavelength L, um, all of that is uh, simply being run from those four equations. There's some unusual sorts of things you can do with it. You can import an image to it, and so I've got a background image of uh, a map of Koshrai, and here we were looking at whether or not a particular angle was being formed. Uh, and on a map such as this, you can actually, I'm touching the blue dot on the map, and I'm dragging it with my uh, finger, and so I can put this blue dot anywhere, and down below it's showing me the coordinates. So it's two-way. I can go down below, grab the little A slider and slide it, or I can just grab the coordinate itself up on the graph and drag it around. A whole new way to interact with math. Math becomes tactile. Math becomes something that one can interact with. Polar coordinates are possible. Something again, a challenge to graph. But here you can see if I change the radius, they are the first value. I change along the radius. And if I change the angle, it swings in a circle. So I can explore and understand polar coordinates. Again, it becomes easy and accessible. I can create unusual sorts of animation, such as this epicycle animation, which shows how an epicycle works in the world of astronomy. And the only thing running this whole animation is, is these equations here. That's it. 
It's the only thing. It's just the equations of the circles, and uh, the rest is the circles going around the other circles. No, no, no programming involved. Just math. So it becomes a quantitative. Uh, a world in which you can do quantitative exploration, but yet there's more. Here's Piper Lap. Piper Lap with a little sailboat in the sun. This is all done mathematically. Here, there's a need to control the domain and range so that a line doesn't go where the line doesn't belong. So if I change a number, I lose part of my picture, or it becomes too small or too big. These are domain. Students quickly learn about domain and, down here, range, when they, they have to try to draw a picture with math. Think about that. This is art, literally, in math class. And there's a lot of math to be done here. Uh, a lot of, there's equations for circles that you want in certain places on the graph. There's lines, slopes, intercepts. There's a lot of math in trying to make a picture. Uh, have you ever just simply told students to make a picture with math? This cannot be done on paper and pencil, and it's why I argue things like Desmos change everything, because we can now do things in ways we couldn't do them before. We used a paper and paper pencil system because that's all we had, but now we have things like Desmos. Desmos works offline. It doesn't have to be online. Once you've downloaded it, it operates, including the regressions. All of these features are available uh, uh, directly uh, on uh, offline or online. Either or. To save it, you have to be online, but Otherwise, they're available online or offline. So Desmos can do so much. It's such a powerful system. The other package I want to look at is PhotoMath. Let's take that equation right there. And uh, I took a picture of it. That's all I did. I just took a picture of it, and it immediately tells me what the solutions are. It will show me the steps that it took to get to that solution. And you can see in about the third step down, the factors. So it does show me the factors. And if I wanted to, to explain how it did a particular uh, part of the problem, I just simply click wherever I want to see how it did it. And it will show me the steps. Not only that, but it will also show me the solution using the quadratic formula if I want to see that. It'll also show me how to do it using the PQ formula. You can see that up here, showing how the PQ formula system is used. So, and it will take me through it by completing the square, showing me the steps to solving it by completing the square. And again, it will show me my each and every step that I would need to take if I was working it out by hand. So if the instructor is saying, well, solve it, show me the steps, <laughs> I can show you the steps with PhotoMath. Well, PhotoMath will give me answers to equations, and the equations may not be ones that are all that easy to factor. Let's try this one. Right to the solutions. Two solutions, one at S negative 7.5, one at 1.25. That will again show me some of the steps to it. It'll tell me how many solutions. It'll even make a graph down here of this. It'll graph whatever problems I'm working on with some limitations. Let's do another one. Here's one we don't usually do in algebra class. Not in the classes I've taught. That's got a cube in it. Oh, right to three solutions. There's a graph that explains why there's three solutions to this particular equation. Three roots. One sitting down there. One down there. One down there and a vertical intercept up there. So it's showing me uh, both the algebraic solution and the graphical solution. It's also showing me that there's a minimum, apparently, and a maximum, and giving me the location of the minimum and the maximum. A maximum up there and a minimum down here. Nice capabilities uh, here in PhotoMath. And uh, I don't know what the steps would be for solving this. I guess, wow. So, uh, steps are there if you want to see the steps for solving a cubic, but we usually don't tackle cubics. So now we can back off and talk about 
in general solving equations and that the degree becomes the number of solutions that you have. We can go to new places now that we couldn't go to before. Well, Photomath will take us to new places. How by taking a picture of the equation and, and showing us the solutions. So we get out of, we no longer worry about factoring and the different difference of squares and all the different techniques and worry more about, okay, can I set the problem up? Can I understand what the answers might mean? And can I explore a system? So these are two ways of, that I think, two apps that I think uh, change the way in which one can and should do mathematics, whether it's Desmos or uh, Photomath. They change the world of mathematics. You know, the, the pyramid was built by hand, one block at a time. The Romans built Roman roads by hand, one stone at a time. But we don't build buildings anymore manually, and we, we certainly don't build roads by laying single stones down manually. Uh, yet we're still doing math in the same systems that were developed a thousand years ago in the Middle East. Uh, by people like Algorithma and, and others uh, uh, who worked on the early systems for solving algebraically, algebra uh, as it was, the system for solving mathematical equations. Um, and those, those work, you can do them on paper and pencil, but that doesn't mean you understand them any better necessarily. The fact that we no longer build roads by hand doesn't mean we don't understand. Uh, and in fact, now it's engineers with engineering degrees help design and build roads. So I, uh, there's still a un quantitative understanding to be gained. There's still learning to be done, but it's different. We are enabled now to explore math in a whole new and richer way, to give it exploration, give it lists of numbers like this list of 25 numbers, and we can do a box plot and a histogram and a standard deviation. We can do medians and means, but in the exact same tool, we can be also doing things like fitting data to a square root equation, uh, in this case, speed at the bottom of a hill. We can tackle math differently. No, the textbooks don't go here. No, the curriculum doesn't go here. No, the standard arrangement of going from arithmetic to linear algebra to quadratic. Yes, everything changes. But that's what these things let you do. They let you change everything. And maybe, just maybe, you wind up with uh, students who... When they reach the end of school, don't go, ah, I'm glad I don't have to take math again, or, geez, when will I ever use a quadratic equation in real life? You have students who maybe see the beauty inside math, the artistry inside math, who have some sense of, as Frankel has said, a love of mathematics. They see it differently. And so, with that, I... I'll conclude, but they should have students who come out with some, with going, wow, math is kind of cool, math is interesting, I can do fun things with math, not, I'm glad I never have to take another math class ever again.